Hey guys, what's up? I'm CJ and welcome back to my galaxy. Today I will be debunking popular Hunger Games theories, but to preface this, I am going to say that this is my own opinion on the theories. I won't be fully, well, I was gonna say I'm not gonna be fully debunking them. Um, I know the Hunger Games like the back of my hand. I have all the evidence up in this noggin. So yeah, I will be fully debunking them. Mark my words, I know everything, probably. I don't know, it, it is my personal opinion. If you want to disagree with me in the comments, go ahead. You just need evidence. That's the rule. If you want to comment on these videos, you have to have evidence for what you're saying. All these theories are popular ones I found on the internet. They're on my laptop right now. I have like little little notes. Uh, I have, word, I have notes open on my laptop. I got there eventually, okay? Leave me alone. So if you see me looking down, I'm looking at my notes. The first one I wanted to discuss was the original Peter was lost. You know, after this, when I'm talking about this, I'm talking about the difference between Peter before in the Hunger Games and Catching Fire and then after he had the, he was hijacked with the Tracker Jacker Venom. Right off the bat, I originally agreed with this whole theory, this whole- this is almost less of a theory, more of a like, how do I- I don't know what word to use, it's more like a, oh no, this is the reality of the situation, and at, at first I did agree with it, I was like, oh no, Peter's been through so much, Kat has, has been th through so much, they're different people, but then I was like, he, like Peter and his original person, original personality isn't necessarily lost because he, Peter worked very hard to become himself again. Whilst not the, entirely the same, he did eventually work towards who he used to be, in in a way, in a sense. The whole uh, Peter getting hijacked thing was supposed to be, in my opinion, and what I've seen from other people on the internet, he was supposed to, this. It's supposed to be kind of a metaphor for the trauma and. Uh, where we see it in a literal sense with Katniss and her trauma and PTSD, we see it in a metaphorical sense in Peter that whilst he went back to who he was originally, who he was at the core of Peter Malark, he never was truly the same because of his trauma, right? And whilst I understand that, that whole sentiment, people often say that the Peter that was in love with Katniss doesn't exist anymore. I have to disagree with that one because he does exist. He just had to fall in love with Katniss twice. I don't know what to tell you. He does exist. He just doesn't have her on a pedestal anymore because it was like an obsessive, little bit of a stalkerish love that Peter had. With that theory, Peter's not exactly the same, but it doesn't mean the boy he used to be doesn't is completely gone it's not in my personal opinion he's still there there's just pieces broken up that he had to put back together the second theory i see a lot and especially when the movie came out foxface killed herself in the arena and that's why she ate the nightlock berries this one i used to also agree with see i am a bit of a sheep when it comes to hunger games theories i just agreed with the internet because i I was very young when I read the books, when I watched the movies, so I just I was like, okay, I'll just agree with you guys and go along with it. This theory comes from the fact in the movies, whilst we don't see it in the books, we see it in, in the books, Foxface is shown to be very smart, very cunning, she is a problem solver. In the movies, we see her doing um, a test to see poisonous, it's like a poisonous plants and poisonous and edible plants test. And she's going through it, she's flying through it. She's very, she's a wizard, at it, right? So fans think because of this, Foxface ultimately purposely ate the Nightlock berries. However, in the books, we're told something different, right? During the feast. Now I can't remember if it's the feast of the banquet. I, could, I know I should, I should know this because I'm a huge Hunger Games fan, but I can't remember. I can, I always get tripped up on this, what it's called. Oh, we're gonna call it the feast. You know, when Katniss goes and gets the medicine for Pia, Foxface has a bag that Katniss assumes is for food, and we know that Foxface has been stealing food from the Creed Tributes, so when their supplies were blown up, Foxface didn't no longer had food, uh, like she didn't have a food source. So suddenly, she's desperate for food. In my personal opinion, I think, and I say personal opinion, 
a lot, but I'm supposed to be debunking these. I have evidence. One, anyway, moving on. I think that Foxface was so desperate for food that she ultimately went, what harm can it do? And ate the berries anyway. Because she was always stealing food from their careers. So she was obviously going to steal food from Peter. So no, Foxface did not kill herself. She was desperate for food and said, screw it. I'm just gonna eat the berries. This next theory I love, and it's about the 75th Hunger Games, the quarter quell, where all the tributes were reaped from the original pool of victors. The arena was de designed for Finnick. This one's a really interesting one, and there are a couple of different pieces of evidence that I think from the book specifically that we can determine that maybe it was redesigned with Finnick in mind, or at least not necessarily Finnick, but District 4 in mind. So we know in Catching Fire, the arena for the quarter quell is essentially a huge body of water in the middle and a jungle surrounding it. We also know that in the books, because Katniss specifically mentions it, if you're not in an area where there's bodies of water, then typically the district people won't learn to swim. So one of the districts specifically, they know how to swim because of the fishing district, District 4. Phoenix from District 4, so he knows how to swim. Katniss in the books knows how to swim. Peter doesn't, and they don't go into detail in the movies in this way. Candace knows how to swim, and I can't say it because it might be a spoiler for Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, but I won't, but I'll bring up, Pete, remind me, because I will come back to this moment, and I will describe an extra piece of evidence from the, um, it, it's like, it's not an evident piece of evidence, it's like an Easter egg in Ballad of Songbirds and Snakes, and I'll tell you, someone remind me in the comments, okay? I'll bring it back. To this anyway moving on okay i'm not going to spoil it for you guys Candace knows how to swim because her father taught her in a lake outside of the boundaries of district 12. peter didn't have access to this lake because he didn't he never left the boundaries of district 12 so he never learned to swim most of the other districts didn't know how to swim either so it gives us pretty solid evidence that the arena at least was designed with district 4 slash finnick in mind although what debunks the finnick theory is a quote in the books. So this specifically happens in the books and not in the movies. So gotta mention that. You have to read the books to be able to get this quote right. Plutarch during the victory tour is dancing with Katniss. Plutarch cuts his dance short with Katniss because he says he has to go to a top secret meeting with the game makers. And in him saying this, Plutarch is essentially revealing that they had this process in motion already that they were already making the arena about six months out of the the them deciding what the quarter quill was uh, was going what was going to happen with the quarter quill now there is a possibility that they already knew that the quarter quill was going to be from the was going to be reaped the tributes were going to be reaped out of the remaining pool of victors, right? They could have already known this, they could have already discussed it. That is very much a possibility. So I think you can really debate this one in the comments if you guys want, bring out their evidence with this. Although I'm inclined to believe it was a last minute attempt post victory tour, which now that I think about it, it could, that top secret meeting could have been occurring because uh, they were already at the end of their victory tour and they had to do like, um, Oh, what is the word? I keep forgetting words during this video. There's a chance that they were trying to manage the rebellion and that's why they had like this top secret meeting at that point of the victory tour. Now I think about it, it could be a possibility that they were discussing for the first time that this was going to be reaped, the, the tributes are going to be reaped from the remaining pool of victors. Maybe. At the very least, it was made with District 4 in mind because District 4 in the books is one of the career, the career districts. Uh, unlike in the movies where it's only one and two, it's also four. I don't know why they skipped three. Uh, Suzanne Collins, I don't know why she chose that. It could have been, it very well could have been with Finnick in mind, but at the very least it was District 4 because they wanted to get another career district back in as victors so they didn't have like an outlier district again causing a bigger rebellion. The next theory is about Katniss and Gail's fathers being purposely killed in the mining accident when they were children because of their political views. We know in the books that we don't know much in the movies from Katniss's 
about Candace's father, but we know in the books she was very close with him and she got a lot of her own political views from her father. And that there's a chance that, because Gail's also very outward with his political opinions, there's a chance he learnt it from somewhere as well, you know. Kids learn things from their parents. So she, there's a chance that they were purposely killed. I think this one's true because the capital is notorious for killing off people that are a threat to them. We know that from the, the entire story that we see from the Hunger Games, you know. I think this one's unfortunately true that they were killed because Katniss's dad specifically was very loud and proud about his political opinions. He went to the Hob. I'm sure he, in the Hob, in the black market of District 12, he definitely said a few of his political opinions there and that's why he was killed. 100% that's one I definitely agree with. Let me know in the, down in the comments below. I don't feel like I need to pull evidence up from that other than the fact that the Hanging Tree song came from her father um, and Prim, Prim, Prim learnt the song and started repeating it and Katniss I think also learnt the song, obviously when her Katniss learnt the song one of one or both of them started singing it and, and their mother was like well let's not do that you're gonna get us killed and that's in the books that that uh, i swear it's a word for word it's a word for word quote definitely uh anyway yeah definitely true the final theory it's not, less of a theory more like a what's your opinion on this what happened to the rest of the world outside of pan am and speaking from someone who's not from the us or north america because pan am's set in north america bits of canada bits of mexico and then like a chunk of the us speaking of someone who's outside of the out of outside of north america whenever i see north america specifically the us doing something stupid i think hmm why don't we just, like, you know, you just want to, like, look away. Like, obviously you can't, but at times I'm like, why? Why? Like, the rest of the world at one point was like, stop. Just stop. We don't want you here. Leave us. You know, it gets, sometimes it gets to a point that you just, like, give up. You know, it it's irreparable at this point. The Hunger Games... And you think you. The rest of the world saw them and went, what can you do? What can you do? And turned away. Guaranteed, there is a world that exists outside of Pan Am. And none of them care. None of them care. All right, I have a bunch of theories that I want to get through. I'm going to uh, do a video next week on these. And if you want to see more videos like this, let me know like any theories you have that you want to hear my opinion on. Leave them in the comments down below. I will be once again making another video but that's all the theories i'm going to be talking about today so hopefully you enjoyed uh please leave any comments about what you'd like to hear me talk about for the hunger games i'm posting all hunger games content three times a week for the next two weeks leading up to the hunger games pre the songbirds and snakes premiere the hunger games prequel premiere so whatever content whatever topics you'd like me to talk about please let me know once again if you'd liked please like and subscribe once again hopefully you enjoyed i need to like double check did you enjoy the video great i know i know you love the video i'm a great host on this channel thank you so much so i have been cj and i'll see you guys in the next video bye